Today I'm looking for one of the most poisonous plants in the United States, which is water hemlock. And I have just pulled up to a pin that I got from iNaturalist from a previous year, and I'm hoping that the plant is still here. More about using iNaturalist for that in another video. Um, so water hemlock, Cicuta is the genus, and I'm hoping that this is Cicuta deglassii, which is kind of the most common species of water hemlock in the Pacific Northwest specifically. And this plant is so poisonous that you don't really even want to touch it. So I have brought gloves and clippers, which I will wash very thoroughly if I end up removing a leaf to photograph. But um, I'm basically photographing this for the book that I'm writing on edible plants. So I have my camera with me and I'm hoping that I can educate people so as not to eat this plant and not to harvest near it. Water hemlock is indeed an aquatic species. So we are going to look in wetland areas for it. A lot more grows in Oregon, so this is not a plant that I see very often for some reason where I forage, which is why I'm out here trying to hunt for it to take a picture for my book. It's a little bit last minute. And the place that this particular outing has taken me is a pond. And I can see that there's lots of cattail, so that seems pretty promising. It also looks like there is some yellow pond lily, which is exciting. I think I just found it, y'all. Looks like it is in seed currently. But I think it does have leaves on it. Yes, it definitely does. This is very exciting and I think it's in a spot where I can actually reach it. So it's right over here. We'll get a closer look in a second. Here are the seed heads of water hemlock. The plants are about four feet tall and as you can see growing in a wetland with lots of cattail around. The flattened leaf stems clasp around the stem which is something that you see in other carrot family plants like angelica. One of the most important identifying characteristics is that the secondary leaf veins end between the serrations, not at the tips of the leaves. The seeds are smooth and have two chambers. For reference, angelica seeds actually have wing-like ridges on them. Water hemlock has umbel-shaped seed heads, which are also the flower heads. And this is a carrot family thing. It's called umbel because it's like an umbrella. And here are the little thumb shapes at, on some of the leaflets on the very ends, which is unique to water hemlock. Not all of the leaves have them, as you can see. The leaves look so much like angelica, sometimes I just can't even believe it. You also see the clasping flattened leaf stems at the ends that were on the stem. Angelica also has those, so it's a hard identifying characteristic to use really to identify anything. Here's one more peek at the habitat with tons of cattail and other aquatic species like skunk cabbage. If you are into plants, or even if you are a gardener, it's really important to learn about poisonous plants. This is because even if you are weeding or weed whacking or your pet eats something or your child eats something, you, it's really helpful to know what it is. For example, if you call poison control and you don't know what plant your child has eaten, that can be really hard for them to know what to do. If they know exactly what plant was that they ate, they actually have certain drugs that they know to counteract the actions of that particular poisonous plant. So this is one of the reasons why I feel so passionately about educating people about poisonous plants, even like almost first before we learn about other plants, because you might get a leaf of it in your bag of plantain leaves, or you might get a root when you're harvesting something else, or you might, God forbid, mistake it for another plant. I hope you enjoyed today's video. Like and subscribe if you would like to see more. I have a book about foraging medicinal plants in the Pacific Northwest. It just came out in April 2024 and it has 35 things that you can harvest that are super common in the Pacific Northwest. It also has recipes with pictures and how to harvest. That's my friend. Here is the page on gumweed or grindelia. And I like to include things like how the seeds are shaped and how the leaves are shaped and how the basil leaves are shaped. Um, so that you can identify the plants more easily in the field. So if this looks really cool to you, you can check it out. It's for sale on Amazon and from my publisher, Mountaineers.